All right, guys, so here's the strongly connected components algorithm. It looks complicated, but it's really just a lot of if or else statements in here that makes it look longer than what it is. Basically, you have to uh, do a depth first search um, that's sort of slightly modified, and then you're going to do a numerator denominator labeling um, where you just write down the sequence of uh, the numbers that you just uh, figured out in the depth first search. Then you're going to reverse the graph. Um, that you see that you've been given and then using the sequence that you found in step two uh, you're going to uh, figure out which uh, components are strongly connected so with that said let's get started um, I'm not going to waste any more of your time basically what we do with the depth first search is we're going to start it just like we, we normally were, would but with a slight modification I'll show you once we get to it so we start at A and then we go to B, and then we can next go to C, and we can next go to D. Now here, normally in the algorithm, we would just backtrack and then go to G as 5. Um, however, in this instance, we're going to do something different, something sort of uh, unusual. Basically what we're going to do is if we can't go any farther, we're going to make note of what the next uh, number would have been in the denominator. So 4 was what D was, so we note that this is 5. Um, so then we go back to C, and we say, oh, can I go anywhere from C? Yes, we can. So C, we can go to G, so we mark this as 6 now. We say, can we go anywhere from G? No, we can't. So we then mark this as Seven. Okay, does that make sense so far? Hopefully you're following me. Um, so G backtracks to C. Can C go anywhere else? No, it can't. So you're going to add eight to this. Um, so backtrack. B, can B go anywhere else? Um, turns out B can. B can go to F. So F is going to be nine. And E is going to be ten. Uh, so E is going to be ten. There we go. And it turns out you can't go to A because you've already visited A. So E is also 11. F will be 12. B will be 13. And A will be 14. Now what about this guy over here? H has never been visited. We have never been able to reach him. Well, it turns out um, that if there's any that you haven't done, whether it's 1 or 2, it doesn't matter which order you put them in because it will be irrelevant. Um, so just pick one of them. So in this case we only have one, which is H. And we just mark it as 15 and 16. Okay, great. So now we've done the first part of this algorithm, step one. This was sort of one of the harder steps. So then, all we're going to do here for the next step, this is uber simple. All we have to do is uh, ignore the numerators altogether and just look at the no denominators and say which one has the highest denominator that has yet to be noted. So we look at all of the denominators, and we say H has the highest. So H is the first in our sequence. Uh, 16, 15, 14. Is there a 14? Yes, A. So A, uh, 13. That's B. Oh, sorry about that. Um, B. And what about a 12? Is there a 12? Yes. So that's F. And then we have uh, E. 10... So 9 would be the next, but 9's in the numerator, so 8. C is that. So then we have, is there a 7 anywhere? 7, yes there is. What about a 6? Uh, 5. So we have a D. And now here you'll note that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 written down, and we only have 8 vertices. So that means we're done with our sequence. So now we found the sequence, and that's step, step two. Pretty simple so far. Now I'm going to pause it, um, just the video for a second, and create the next step. But in the next step, the only thing you do is you reverse this graph um, in your head. So all the arrows that are pointing in one direction, you just swap them. So C goes to D, like this, but we're going to swap it and make D go to C like that. Okay, so I'm going to pause it, like I said, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I encourage you to double and even triple check your arrows once you've done, uh, you're done reversing them, but this is the reverse graph of um, this guy up here. So you note that C goes to D in this example, 
um, but D goes to C in this example. So all the arrows have just been flipped. So now we're going to work with this graph, and we're going to very quickly uh, figure everything out. Now using this sequence, this sequence is going to tell us where to start to find our strongly connected components. It's really simple. Um, it says start at H and see all the places the H can go to. Every place the H can go to is part of a strongly connected um, sequence uh, or the strongly connected circuit, so to speak. So basically we look at it and we say, okay, starting at H, where can H go? It turns out H can't go anywhere. So we write down H by itself and that is a strongly connected component. Perfect, check it off the list. So then we go to A, we write it down we say, what can A go to? A can go to E, so we write down E. E can go to F, so we write down F. F cannot go to A because we've already been there, and F cannot go to G because the graph is reversed. So that means um, F can go to B though, so B is part of it. Can B go anywhere else? No, nowhere else new. So that means A, B, and F are used, as well as E. And now note that this is just a coincidence that these three were all in sort of order. This could be way out of order, you really don't know, so you need to be sure you're checking them off as you go. So now we note that the next one in the sequence is C that we haven't visited. So we note C down, we look at C. Uh, C can go to G, but it can't go to B because B's already been visited and is already part of uh, another component. So C can go to G and then G can't go anywhere that hasn't been visited yet because H has already been visited. This is why the sequence is so important. If we had just started at C first, we would have gone to C and then G and then H and we wouldn't have known that H was part of its own separate component. So C and G have been marked off and lastly we have D. So this is our answer guys. This is our strongly, these are our strongly connected components. Um, they're sort of in their own things. This is a strongly connected component, this is a strongly connected component, and this is a strongly connected component. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Hope you guys uh, figured it out from that example. Alright, how about you guys try and do an example using this one, and this is sort of a modified version of the first one. See if you guys can get the answers for the strongly connected components. I'll be back in a second and show you guys the answers. Alright, for the depth first search, all we have to do is we have to say A is 1, B is 2, 3 for C, C can go to D, which is 4, D can go to H, which is 5, H can't go anywhere, so H backtracks 6, D can't go anywhere else new, so that's 7, C can go to G, which is new, so that makes this 8, F is 9, and F can't go anywhere else, so it's also 10. Backtrack from G, so G is 11. C can't go anywhere new, so that means it's 12. B can go somewhere new, that's E, so E will be 13 and 14. And B will be 15. And A will be 16. And those are the numbers for the first bit. Now give me a second, let me reverse the graph. Well, actually, let's first find the, uh, the sequence real quick. We'll do that just by looking at uh, the numbers. From highest to lowest, we have uh, A, then we have B, then we have E, then we have C, then we have G, followed by F, and 9, 8, Seven for D, six will be H, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we only have eight vertices. So that is our sequence. Now let me reverse the graph real quick, and then we can uh, figure out the strongly connected component. So real quick, in our last thirty seconds, we write down A. A is a strongly connected component. A goes to E, which can go to uh, B and B can't go anywhere else, so that's a strongly connected component. We write, mark these off the list, C and G, so C can't go anywhere else but D, 
So that makes this a strongly connected component. And then we have G, which can go to F, which is a strongly connected component, which leaves us finally with H as the last strongly connected component for all of these. And that's how you find the strongly connected component, guys. Oh, or components. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks.